Welcome to Mission Eyes with the Missions Guys, a podcast of the Arkansas Baptist State Convention, offering biblical and practical insight and strategies designed to equip and encourage missions leaders to carry on mission work. The goal is to fulfill the Great Commission from a church's local community to the ends of the earth. That is why we missionize. Now here are your hosts, the Missions Guys, Sam Roberts and Clint Ritchie. Good morning and welcome to Mission Eyes with the Mission Guys. I'm Sam Roberts, have Clint Ritchie here with me, and we have a special guest we're going to introduce in just a few moments. Now, Clint, when we talk, when we think about uh, the mission of the church and the Great Commission, of course, Matthew 28 comes to mind. Uh, we, we all know that. We know that by heart. Go, make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. And I'm with you always to the end of the earth. Uh, those were the last words that Jesus spoke. Uh, they're recorded in Matthew's Gospel. Now, when we think about of all nations and going to all nations, when I was growing up in a smaller membership church in northeast Arkansas, in the Delta there, Going to the nations was really out of question for most people in the church, simply because of the cost and the time that was involved in going. The The only way to go to the nations was to get on an airplane, travel to a foreign country. The nations were over there, someplace else other than right here. But today, and even here in Arkansas, it's possible to go to the nations by just walking across the street. <laughs> the nations have come to us. So on this episode, we want to introduce you to a term that you may not have heard about or you may not quite understand. Maybe you have heard it, but you're just not sure what this means. And the term is diaspora missions. Diaspora missions. Now, there's one other passage of Scripture that I want to read to you that kind of sets a foundation uh, for what we're talking about with the nations, and it's found in Acts chapter 17, verses 26 and 27. And he made from one man, speaking about God creating, made from one man every nation, every people group, every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. That's an incredible passage of Scripture, and we have an excellent expositor of Scripture with us this morning who's going to expound his wisdom on that <laughs> that particular verse to us. We have none other than the one and only Jamie Naramore, the cross-cultural strategist for the Arkansas Baptist State Convention Church planting team. Good morning, Jamie. Did I set you up well there? That was great, Dr. Sam. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, as, as we get started here, uh, kind of take that passage, though, and, and give us your thoughts on that, uh, of what... Uh, uh, Luke is saying there in Luke in Acts chapter 17. Yeah, so, you know, I think Acts chapter 17 is a passage of Scripture that we use it for a lot of different purposes, uh, teaching about contextualization, kind of the genius of Paul when he would preach the gospel to different settings and stuff like that. Uh, he obviously takes the gospel story back to creation. He's explaining this unknown God that in the middle of the plurality of religious worship happening in there in Athens. He's explaining to them the God they're ignorant of. And I think it's really interesting. Uh, I read somewhere not long ago where, you know, Paul was not known for short sermons. And so (laughs) these six or seven verses that we get in Acts are surely not the whole sermon that he got to preach. If, If he had the opportunity to preach a sermon in Athens, it wasn't that short. And so it's interesting then to think from that perspective, this is something that Luke is highlighting out of that sermon. And um, again, I'm I'm not an expert at Greek. I've done some word studies and things like that. But but it does say that God has determined allotted periods in the boundaries of our dwelling place. Um, And that word determined that he uses there is this word 
uh, that kind of relates to the horizon, if you will. And so um, there's certain things that seem to be horizoned, you know, and most of those relate to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus is coming again. But then he specifically says where people live and when they live there are in some way horizoned by God. And he ties it with a gospel purpose that they might have an opportunity to to know him. And so I think of all the things he could have preached and for all the things to Luke, for Luke to pull out, he grabs that phrase uh, to let us know that um, God is somehow involved in orchestrating the movement of people, but it's not without purpose. There's intention behind it. So, so this was the, the Twitter tweet uh, of, of Paul's lengthy sermon. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And, and Luke says, here's what you need to here's know. Here's what you need to know. Here's yeah. the most important part. That's awesome. I told you, Clint, that this this guy, man, he's raised the bar of this podcast. And we're five minutes in. I mean, can I wouldn't I wouldn't say that's the whole point of that particular passage, but I do think that is a that's a significant uh, a significant thing that you used so, some words that were big so, for an old yeah. boy from Sheridan. You know, contextualization. <laughs> And plurality. I mean, things I can't even say. So, man, it's still Greek uh, to me. So. Yeah. Okay. We well, let's jump into our topic. There we go. And, and Jamie, uh, give us a definition. What do we mean when we use the word use the word diaspora missions? And what's the end goal of diaspora missions? Right. So, I think a lot of folks probably, at least growing up in the church or reading scripture, you're you might have some familiarity with diaspora in terms of the Jewish population being dispersed outside of Israel. And that's really where it comes from in our context, is that people are dispersed or displaced from their homelands, and not just Jews, obviously, out of Israel, but you look at today, people have always been on the move, whether it's for refugee crises or uh, famine or things happening in their countries or just simple immigration for work or school or any other reason. But people are dispersed or displaced out of their homelands. And so Diaspora Missions is really that effort to focus your missions and church planning strategies outside of that particular people group or ethnicity's home country. So you're not bound by geographical constraints. Uh, if, If we're working with a particular group of Indians, for example, we're not just looking at that group in India, but we're thinking of where are all the other places on the globe that those people can be found. Uh, and the United States is is a key example of this because we are a nation of immigrants, and so it's a big deal for our country. There's hundreds of unreached people groups represented in the United States today. There's there's 70 or so unreached people groups represented in Arkansas today. And so when we think of diaspora missions, it really is coming along with the Great Commission in view of reaching those people groups wherever they are found, specifically outside of their homelands. So Okay, awesome, awesome. Jamie, we've seen the, the National Convention uh, really get involved in this ministry. You've been one of the leaders in that, uh, not just in Arkansas, but across the SBC. Tell us how are the SBC entities working together Uh, to meet this need. Yeah. Um, So one thing is the Diaspora Missions Collective was formed a few years ago out of a desire of of a lot of leaders within some of these entities. As we had kind of informally or organically been connecting with one another, networking with each other, you know, we call the IMB often and say, hey, we've got this particular people group here in Arkansas, what are you guys doing with them? How can we learn from you? What resources are out there? There's a church plant in this particular Sin City. Is there anybody there that has experience? Um, Is there any missions discipleship resources that WMU has out there related to refugees? And we have just a great network with our entities and agencies and institutions of resources and connection and expertise with people that there's no reason we don't play well to get, that we shouldn't be able to play well together when it comes to this topic. And so the Diaspora Missions Collective was formed out of that desire to see all the different um, agencies or entities within Southern Baptist life that kind of have um, something, you know, they've, they've got some experience or resource or reason for this to be a big deal in their own task, but we're, we're networking together to learn from each other, to share, to collaborate, 
And it's really been a beautiful picture of what it means to be Southern Baptist to cooperate together. So, so it is exactly that. You've got uh, Send Relief, Send Network, you've uh, the International Mission Board, Women's Missionary Union, the Executive Committee, state conventions and associations collaborating with one another, finding ways to network, to resource, to train, to bring the best of Southern Baptist life into this conversation and to really show what it looks like for all of us to be cooperating together to, to reach the nations that God has sent us here. And, and so bring Arkansas into this mm-hmm. picture, Jamie. Uh, how, how, how do we connect there? Uh, what does this look like for us uh, as a state convention? Yeah, and so a lot of it is because the, the DM Collective, so dmcollective.org is where you can learn more about this, and there's resources and training opportunities and things like that on there. Uh, you know, all of these institutions exist to serve the local church. And so for Arkansas, this cooperative effort is intended to serve the local church. So as Arkansas Baptists, we play a role in this. We're learning from these others that that are experienced in it or or finding new ways or best practices or whatever it is, we're learning from them so that we can bring that home and serve the local church. And it's it's a big deal for Arkansas. I mean, we're not a big state, so three million people. Right. Uh, but of that three million people, over 300,000 would be considered first or second generation immigrant. So either they or their parents were born in a foreign country. And that's not including the third and fourth generation who still haven't maybe assimilated to all of American life. So you've still got a good chunk of people in the state who don't think like us. uh, They don't worship like us. They probably wouldn't feel at home or comfortable in any one of our churches on a Sunday morning. And so we are able to recognize then God has brought the nations to us. And again, it's not maybe in the millions, but hundreds of thousands of people. And they've come from some of the most unreached places on earth. And so for Arkansas... You know, you kind of opened with that story of growing up and missions was always far off, far flung mm-hmm. and kind of out of reach for most people. And in, in a lot of ways, it still kind of is. Yeah. Does it? But but I think what we see the Lord doing is he brings people to us because he has a heart for them to be reached with the gospel. And it really is a beautiful opportunity for every Arkansas Baptist, regardless of your calling or your opportunity to be involved with the Great Commission Yes, in your community and with your neighbors and peers, but with people from unreached people groups, with the nations in your own backyard. Yeah. Now, Jamie, when you first came uh, to the Arkansas Baptist State Convention, you were part of the missions team. And and one of those uh, resources that you developed was, was an incredible prayer piece on identifying people groups within the state. Uh, can, can you give some updated info uh, to, to our listeners on uh, how many uh, are, you, you talked, you know, 300,000 that are foreign born, children foreign born, mm-hmm. not to mention third and fourth generation folks as well. But how many of those people groups are represented in this small state of 3 million people? Right. And how many of those would IMB say are the unreached, the unengaged? Yeah. So we can, we can give name to about 140 different people groups represented. Wow. And, and that might be, you know, in some cases that's one family. So it, it might not be a ton of folks, but it might be 10,000 in another situation, you know. So 140 different people groups can be represented. And we really focus on that to bring awareness, to say, look, folks yes. that you never thought you would meet are right here, you know, in your community. Uh, the IMB would, would label about 70 of those would be categorized as unreached or unreached and unengaged. Less are unengaged completely with some sort of church planning strategy. Uh, but a lot of times what we find is the way that we categorize them is because we're not dealing with hundreds of thousands from a particular people group. We'll tend to take, we'll, we'll tend to take people that might be a specific tribe or what the IMB might call a people group, and we might cluster them together into some larger groups, Okay, you know? Uh, So within that, we might be talking about, in some instances, we are talking about a UUPG that's represented. Uh, And there's even, uh, there's about 35, I think it's about 35 frontier people groups that are recorded as, they're, they're kind of the least of the unengaged. And 
11 of those are represented in Arkansas. Wow. So 11 frontier people groups. Yeah. A, a third of, a third of those you're, you're talking about those most unreached, right. ba- basically in, in the whole world. Right. And there's 11 of those groups. Yeah, there's here. there's 11 that are represented. And again, it's it's it might be a handful of sure, individuals. Sure. It might be a dozen or so. It's not a ton. But that's where we're seeing just incredible things. I remember when I first started getting into this, um, it's been a heartbeat of mine for a while, but when, when Arkansas Baptist gave me opportunity to do this full time, I reached out to a friend of mine in another city and was just like, what do you do? Where do you start? And he said, Jamie, you don't have a strategy until you have a first name. And that wow. was a big deal for me because demographics, research, all that kind of stuff is important. It provides kind of like a baseline or a, a springboard that you can work from, but really you need a first name. You need an individual. And what we have found is in some of those groups, maybe we can only identify one person, but we have seen in some of those instances that one person come to faith in Jesus. And that's a big deal because now that person, you know, meant the world to us in that moment to whatever church it was that was reaching out to them. But that person has a whole household on the other side of there. They've got a whole relational network. They've got a whole nation of people that they're connected to. And so it might seem like something small to have just a handful of this or that particular group. But if you have an individual that you're building a relationship with, that you have the opportunity to share the gospel with and to disciple them and show them what church looks like, God can take them anywhere from here. And you've just made a big splash uh, in, in the in the Great Commission. So. Yeah, I, I love that truth you just shared. I think it's worth repeating multiple times. Mm. You don't have a strategy until you have a name. You don't have a strategy until you have a name. Is that what you said? Yeah. yeah. Uh, a first name or a right. name. Uh, th- and, and that goes across the board, whether we're talking about internationals or uh, whomever we're trying to reach in our communities and across our state, the importance of building relationships Uh, because the gospel is relational and and so that's you don't have a strategy until you have a name that's that was powerful i I thought the same thing that that applies to the guy everybody calls bubba you know (laughs) in a in a small town in arkansas so yeah it's vital to me we we talked about getting to know your neighbor and loving your community that fits right into other topics that we've had you know as we look at this uh there's the, the idea of the nations coming to us. Uh, and, and this is a, you know, a, a hot political topic, but I think more than anything to us, it is a, it's a gospel issue. Yeah. And, and the Lord has brought the nations to us where you've talked about that we can uh, minister, get to know, share the gospel, see people saved. It may be the only believer in their family, only believer in their people group that, that may go back home uh, may not, uh, you know, and then I'm thinking about, we, we look at it maybe and, and, and think, well, that happens in Little Rock and Northwest Arkansas, more populated areas, but it happens in small communities in Arkansas where, uh, someone moves in and opens a Mexican restaurant, right. buys a gas station, uh, a donut shop, you know, the list goes on and on of how the nations have come to us. How can a church get started, get more involved in engaging uh, these folks that the Lord has brought to them? You know, I really think, and it's not cliche, but I really do think prayer is the starting point. Uh, pray first that, that you and your congregation have the heart of the Father for all nations, and and you see how much love he has for the nations. I joke with everybody. My, my uncle several years ago did one of those 23andMe DNA tests. <laughs> And I was thrilled out of my soul when I found out we were about 1% North African uh, because I served as one of your IMB missionaries in North Africa, and all I ever wanted was to be one of the people. And he confirmed it for me. Uh, But what was not ever on that DNA test was anything related to Jewish blood. And so I think about just the exclusivity of the gospel in an elected people and how so many of us were strangers and aliens to the promises and the covenants of God, and he included me. God's heart for the nations included me. And I would say the vast majority of Arkansas Baptists, it's the same as true. God's heart for the nations included 
you. Amen. And so are you praying to have God's heart for the nations? And then as you do that, start praying for what nations do you want us to really start praying for, to have a heart for? And that's where those prayer guides are helpful to kind of give some focus to that. There's churches that have missions partnerships all over the world. And and so you can pray that maybe God would connect the dots with your international or national partnerships to something locally. Uh, maybe it works in reverse. You're looking for international partnerships and you say, God, who have you sent us here? You know, but I just, I really do think praying. I don't think God is going to give us the nations if we're not asking him for them. And, and so you got to start with prayer and that. And then I do think you, you've got to start having some different eyes in your neighborhood and eyes around your state. And you see the normal and regular rhythms of life, but with a missional perspective. And so you mentioned, Clint, you mentioned various businesses. That's a great first start to just recognize maybe the changing demographics in your local community through the opening of new businesses or business owners. I share with people all the time the story of um, driving back from Jonesboro, doing a meeting with some pastors and was trying to beat traffic in Little Rock. And I got stuck. Uh, needing gas in Truman, Arkansas. And lo and behold, I went to grab my receipt from the pump and it wouldn't print, but I had to get that receipt. And it said, go inside to see the clerk. And as I'm walking inside, I see some unfamiliar language above the door. And I thought, Lord, this is exactly why you sent me in here for this receipt. And sure enough, there was Uh, a Hindu man who owned the gas station there in Truman, Arkansas, man, and the fact that someone took time to talk to him and learn about him and understand his culture and stuff, he didn't care if anybody else walked in that day. But do you see your community with those types of eyes, Mm -hmm. the things he's doing? And it's stereotypical, but nail salons, donut shops, gas stations, little restaurants and markets, school districts, you know, seeing, you know, school districts are always paying attention to the languages that are being spoken. And so just seeing with fresh eyes and wanting to be aware, and it's not going to be hundreds of thousands of people in most of our communities around Arkansas, but that family, that person, it'll mean the world to them for you to take an interest in them. And I start small. Uh, we work a lot, my family and I, we work a lot with uh, Muslims in particular and one of the one of the common denominators of Muslims who come to faith is they had a sincere relationship with a believer and that took time to talk to them about it. And we've heard so many stories of people asking donut shop owners who have been there for 10 years in their little town and no one's ever asked where they're from. And when that person finally asked them a question, they just lit up and now they can't get rid of them. You know, they're having lunch yeah. with them and inviting their homes. And it's a big deal. It really is. And, and those one or two people, like you said earlier, that may be in your community mm-hmm. are connected to a huge network right. of 10 or 15 over here, 100 over here, and then back home as well. Right, right. Because we, we don't know how they got here or why they got here. We don't, uh, you know, it's said a lot, we don't celebrate brokenness or evil or the acts of evil men. Whatever the reason was that brought them here, we don't disregard either that politics and the economics and all that kind of stuff are at play. But can we get beyond those things to see God's intention for this moment? And those folks, they, they do an incredible job of walking a lot of times in two worlds at the same time. This world here and the world that they left behind. Technology has made that possible. Uh, money is still oftentimes being sent back home. They are trying to get you know other family members to come over. There are relational connectors. Um, and we're, we've even seen that connection, you know, benefiting international workers and the church planning efforts happening overseas as a result of those relationships taking place here awesome. on our soil. G- g- give so, us a story there. Yeah. And so, you know, here in Little Rock, one of our church planters, um, just a, a, a crazy God story of how a young man came out of Buddhism, met a Christian in Kansas, God opened the doors for him to get a job in Little Rock, Arkansas, and through that got involved with one of our church plants here locally. Um, Through that, he was being trained in how to share his faith and make disciples, and the Lord put it on his heart to start sharing with his family back home in the country where he was born. And so, sure enough, on his first visit back after being a part of that church plant, he learned how to share the gospel, learned what discipleship looks like. He goes and shares with his mom. 
his mom comes to faith, she starts sharing with uh, other family members and friends in their circle. And so now it's become, he takes mission trips back home uh, to share mm-hmm. the gospel. And, and so just seeing different things like that. Um, and, and even right now, we're, we're, we have one church who's getting ready to take a mission trip this summer, and they're going to be partnering with missionaries there as a result of connections made with that same international people group here. And so, oh, wonderful! Uh, yeah, so it's just it's just cool to watch how God. Yeah, connects we the we dots. had those kind of conversations several years ago when I came on board here, uh, of that uh, that that dream, that hope, that this would happen, mm-hmm. you know, uh, that God would place on the heart of a church, an individual, a people group, a, and then they would be able to find that people group here, and as a result of that 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 fuels the going there Mm -hmm. uh so it's wonderful to hear those stories uh you know you talked about observation there and uh seeing our community with different eyes um and and i think it's important for us as well even in small town arkansas uh to realize that uh, you know you talked about internationals who are there living in two worlds Mm -hmm. and, and this this culture is foreign to them. There's a whole lot they don't understand. There's a whole lot they don't know. They need help navigating through that. And what an excellent pathway of connection with relationships to help them, to understand customs, to understand idioms and the language and whatever it may be, that their business may be successful. Um, great Great opportunities there. Yeah. You know, same sort of thing as we go to a, another country, we're dependent upon, you know, that translator, that missionary who is there to contextualize for us. There's that word, yeah. Clint, uh, uh, to let us know, you know, th- these are the customs. Uh, this is what you need to do, what you don't need to do. Right. Uh, you know, these are some phrases you need to stay away from, what, whatever it may be, just to learn more about the people, the barriers, you mm-hmm. know and help, help us walk over those, cross those barriers. In that same way, internationals who are in our communities need that help. What an excellent place for the church to be that agency, that person that helps them right. to cross those, those barriers to feel like this can be home. Mm-hmm. And in that process, be able to share the gospel. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And I would just add, you know, I think this is at the heartbeat of, of Jesus all the way back in the great commandment. You know, when he's asked, you know, what are the greatest commandments? He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. He's quoting out of Leviticus. Hmm. And the context of that, that quote in Leviticus is, hey, you guys were slaves in Egypt, and I rescued you out. So when you come into the promised land, don't forget that when other foreigners come. In fact, love your neighbor as yourself, you know, and so exactly. uh, and so he has a heartbeat for the immigrant, the migrant, the refugee. And and I, and I think you think generationally about it, too. Are we, you going to see a massive church planning movement take place? Maybe we pray and dream towards that. But in reality, you're you're changing a family's spiritual lineage. It always starts with mm. one person. And so it might just be one family, but what is the fruit of that one family generations down the road? We've got to think wow. longer than just right here. We're working with the family right now, and it's hard, but we keep thinking about the kids. And it's like, but if the kids get the gospel three or four generations from now, that could be hundreds if not thousands of people whose spiritual lineage changed because their family was served well and welcomed well in the name of Jesus here. Um, and so I think you just have to have a bigger bigger perspective on things um, and be faithful in the little stuff in the middle yeah, of that. Yeah, that's you good. Know, so. Hey, for, for our listeners, I, I want to share just a couple of things I, I picked up on, on an article that relates to what Jamie said about the importance of prayer. Uh, it's an article entitled Reaching the Nations Next Door, and, and the, the author focused in on prayer. Uh, and he said, consider the chain reaction praying triggers. Mm. Prayer for the nations leads believers to love the nations. Love for the nations 
leads to compassion for those in our midst. Acts of compassion extended to people from other country leads to gospel conversations. Gospel conversations change eternity. With eternity in mind, here are some suggestions for praying for the nations living in your setting. Ask God to create within your church an awareness of the nationalities around your church. Pray for God's love to create a welcoming spirit in your church that extends to people from very different contexts. Ask God to reveal to you in your church the felt needs of people groups in your ministry area. Contact language pastors and church planters in your area and ask them for ways you can pray for them and their outreaches. Pray for the leaders to emerge from within your congregation who are driven by God's love for the nations represented near your church. Ask God to reveal strategies for engaging your congregation in conversation about the people groups near you and God's love for them. I thought that was pretty cool stuff. Uh, Just simple ways to make prayer a focus in reaching the nations with the gospel. Now, uh, Jamie, there are some plans that are changing for you. Uh, God's leading your family in a little different direction pretty soon, and we're 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 sad to to see this happen. Uh, but at the same time, we're we we are just filled with joy uh, that God has placed upon the Naramore family uh, this desire to relocate to New York City uh, and to be a missionary there and to plant church there and reach unreached peoples in New York City. Can you just bring people up as we wrap wrap this segment up uh, on what those plans are for the Naramore family and how we can be praying for you? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I don't think you can spend every day, every week of the last several years trying to mobilize other people without being willing to be mobilized yourself. And that's always been a prayer for our family, our yes, as we say, was always on the table, just always trusting God to put it where he wants on the map. And uh, really in the stillness of 2020, uh, which was really a bad time for things, uh, the Lord started putting <laughs> that on our heart. Um, uh, we, we say, you know, he says, be still and know that I'm God. I will be exalted among the nations. I'll be mm. exalted in the earth. And and we heard that and we heard him say go, but we didn't know where it was. So it took a few years for him to kind of uh, bring that into clarity and focus and we thought it was going to be somewhere on the other side of the world and we're ready making plans for that um, and probably the last place on the list in all honesty was New York City uh, we have a larger family <laughs> compared to most people there but but we just couldn't escape the burden there's one and a half million uh, Muslims in New York City largest concentration in North America and they are concentrated in some kind of key neighborhoods around and there's just like with anywhere there's just a lack of laborers and a lack of focus and God has brought them here uh, we believe for that express Acts 17 purpose of mm-hmm. them knowing Jesus and so we just said okay Lord we're gonna make ourselves available to you whatever that looks like and he said move there uh, we tried running from it because <laughs> uh, we love what we do here I love serving Arkansas Baptist, this job has been an absolute dream come true in a lot of ways. And that was probably the hardest, one of the hardest things, grandparents and other stuff like that, obviously too. But uh, that was probably one of the hardest things to to wrestle with as a family. But yeah, so the plan is uh, summer of 24 to be relocated in New York City and trying to join a, a couple of other families and starting house churches among Arabs in particular around the metro area. And we look forward to training and equipping and mobilizing local churches to reach their Muslim neighbors while we ourselves are doing that as a family. Uh, And then also trying to give churches a platform in the city, just another footprint for their missions partnerships where they could send teams that would be able to experience the nations and experience a lot of nations that they probably wouldn't typically take short-term trips to. And so these folks come from a lot of countries that are pretty hostile or volatile in nature and are sometimes limiting towards missionaries and, and churches in particular going. And so we can give folks an experience of that and God's heart for them in a place that's a lot easier to access. And so that's what we're uh, being led to do, and we're in the transition stage right now of getting ready for that. 
And so if people want to follow along with our journey, they're welcome to reach out to us. They can contact us uh, in, in a lot of different ways, but one, they could go to naramore.epistle.org. So E-P-I-S-T-L-E, like a sent letter, naramore.epistle.org. And that's uh, where we will post prayer updates and stuff like that. So folks can subscribe there if they want to follow along or get in touch and, and pray for us. We would, we would cover those prayers a lot. So Wonderful. Awesome. Well, Jamie, you have been uh, a tremendous blessing to Arkansas Baptist and to me uh, personally, and I thank you for that. I uh, look forward to following the journey and what God is going to do through you and Jessica and the kids uh, as, as you relocate. And I know Arkansas Baptists are going to be interested in knowing that as well. Uh, so I encourage our, our friends out there to reach out to Jamie uh, and just, just keep in touch with what's going on. Get those prayer requests from him and, uh, and covenant together to pray for uh, he and his family as they make this move. Uh, Clint, what do you have to, to add to our discussion as we wrap it up? Yeah, I just want to uh, you know, remind folks, it is, uh, we're summertime. It's here, and it's VBS time. And just to encourage you, you know, as, as you look at VBS, consider those kids in your community uh, that may not mm. look like you or talk like you or, you know, have anything in similar with, uh, in, you know, you have nothing in common with, you think. And uh, maybe put a, a focus on, on inviting them to VBS and planting the seed there and just seeing families change as a result of the gospel. All right. Well, with that, we will wrap up this segment. Jamie, thank you for being here. I appreciate y'all. Appreciate you so much. And as always, God bless. Have a great day. Thanks for joining the Missions Guys today. If you liked what you heard, rate and review us on your favorite podcasting platform. And to keep up with what is happening in Arkansas Missions, visit absc.org slash missions.